at Chet's watch. What time is it? Well, you don't need to know what time it is really. But um, I'm so glad to see you here this morning. I know the hour time difference is a lot on a Sunday morning. That is gray and cloudy as it is. But as always, it is warm and wonderful here in this place. So welcome to you all on this fourth Sunday of Lent. Today is Encore Sunday, the United Methodist Committee on Relief. A special offering envelope is included in your bulletins this morning. So when the time comes for our offering, I hope that you will make a generous contribution to the ministries of uh, all of those wonderful United Methodist people who go all over the world. Wherever disaster strikes, the United Methodist Church is there. And our offerings on this Sunday go to support that awesome and important ministry. So thank you in advance for your generosity. My friend Matthew Caputi is here as our organist. Will Kelly is home for uh, a couple of minutes from college, and so he is here this morning as our lector. And we begin today by celebrating a couple of wonderful people's birthdays. Uh, Danielle Matthews, all the way in the back, celebrated her birthday yesterday. Mary Lou Frost, over in the corner, celebrated her birthday on Thursday. Diane Thurlow will be celebrating this coming Thursday. We have a lot to be grateful for. So and Pastor Mary oh, will be celebrating her birthday. <laughs> a lot to be thankful for on this Sunday morning. And with that all said, I invite you to stand as you are able. We begin with our call to worship from the Book of Common Prayer. And the people's response is in bold in our bulletins. Lenten travelers, the journey is long. Let us take a moment to rest and breathe. Only God can we find our rest. Sometimes the road is easy, and we bask in the warmth of the light who guides us. Other times the road is hot, and we hide from the light. The free free actions made known in public. Some days we delight in the joy of journeying together on this road. Today, let us come into the light together as we learn to love God and one another through the twists and turns of our Lenten journey. Come, let us worship God together. Amen. Our opening hymn, God is Here, it's number 660.
neglected to say in the announcements at the beginning that the flowers on the altar this morning are given by Ken Thurlow in celebration of his beloved Diane's birthday. I put the beloved part in. <laughs> Once again today we see a prayer of yearning. So many of us are yearning to know God better, to move closer to the heart of Jesus, to move into full communion with one another and with the Lord. So I invite you as we are gathered here to take a deep, deep breath to recognize the presence of God's Holy Spirit in our midst, always leading, always guiding, always seeking to fill our hearts with love. Let us breathe in the presence of that Spirit and in an attitude of prayer, open your minds to receive these words. Gracious God, lift up our hearts this day, for we long to see your salvation. Lift us up from the pits of sin and sorrow, that we may walk in the light of your love and your grace. <coughs> Create us anew as reflections of your light and as offerings of your grace. For we yearn to bless everyone we meet, even ourselves, in your name, in hope and in gratitude, we pray. Amen. My siblings in Christ, in Christ Jesus, we are created to do good things. By God's grace, we are able to be good people. In God's goodness, we are created good. In Christ's grace, we are saved by love, that we may love and be loved. Amen. Jesus 
What is it? <laughs> so Jesus, so Jesus taught us a, a, a verse from John three sixteen, and we're going to do this. Have you heard it before? For God so loved the world. You've heard that. We're going to memorize it. But we got a little little ditty we're going to do with it. Are you ready? Can you hold my microphone? When I point you the word, this is going to be a little round. This is going to be a rap. We're going to do a rap. We're going to do a rap. You hear that? Okay, so when I point to it, for God. For God. Good. You can say that. You can do it all. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. That he gave. That he gave. He gave his only son. He gave his only son. That whoever believes in him. That whoever believes in him. Should not die. Should not die. Because they're going to live, live forever with God. Okay. Maybe we should have everybody here. Yeah. 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 Okay. You're, you're, this is my helper here. I recruited a pet today. <laughs> okay, I'll push For God. For God. God. For God so loved the world. For, For God, God so loved the world. That he gave. That he gave. Right. His only son. His, His only, only son. son. That whoever believes in him. That whoever believes in him. Shall not die. Shall not die. Oh, you guys did very wow. well. <laughs>
Listen, the voice of God is calling. Speak. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. The Hebrew Bible is from Numbers chapter 21, verses 4 through 9, and can be found on page 139 in your Hebrew Bible. From Mount Or they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom, but the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole, and whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. The epistle is from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10, and can be found on page 192. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses. And we were, by nature, children of wrath like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Jesus Christ. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast, for we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to do by our way of life. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. The Gospel is from John chapter 3, verses 1 through 21, and can be found on page 93. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these things that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can no one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit, Nicodemus said to him. How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very, much, very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can I believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except those who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, 
that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it is clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. And the title for this morning's sermon is The Grace to be Born from Above. Will you bow your heads, please? God, we thank you for this time of respite. This time that you have set aside for us to listen to your word and allow your word to permeate our hearts. God, we pray that we will all be changed in ways great and small by your word made flesh in Jesus Christ. Thank you for the gift of grace and faith. Thank you for the goodness and the mercy that you lend to us. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, almighty God. For you are our rock and our redeemer. We are four weeks into the observance of Lent. My prayer for you is that Lent is becoming a season of self-examination, a time to recommit to the fundamental spiritual practices that undergird our faith. This morning I ask you once again to reflect upon John Wesley's burning question for the people called Methodist. How is it with your soul? Before you answer this question for yourselves, I want you to consider all of the events of daily life in the past week within the framework of your Christian faith. You see, I believe that we evangelize with our whole lives. Actions always speak louder than words. Were the deeds for which you now, were the deed, were their deeds, oh my goodness, were their deeds for which you now need to make amends? Were there words exchanged that, in retrospect, you might now wish to take back? Is your heart filled with tenderness for friend and stranger alike? Are expressions of forgiveness continually on your lips? Have you abundantly and joyfully loved both God and neighbor. For people born of the Spirit, such self-examination should not simply be confined to Lent, but should instead be a matter of habit as we strive to commit our whole lives to living out the faith as disciples of Jesus Christ. Such high standards of personal conduct are not the result of any laws we have constructed for ourselves, but instead we live faithfully as a response to God's abundant grace. We evangelize as a response to God's infinite mercy. The good news that we spread comes naturally to us in response to God's boundless love. 
the scripture that we reflect upon today centers around a man named Nicodemus, who was a Pharisee, a man for whom being born from above was a difficult concept for him to grasp. Nicodemus may have come to Jesus under cover of darkness, but his heart was burning bright with questions. He never directly asked Jesus, are you the Messiah, the chosen one of God? Yet his demeanor and his line of questioning revealed his deep yearning to know the truth about Jesus. His heart has begun to awaken to this truth. But like so many of us, his mind is slow to follow and slower still to trust. Nicodemus is like so many of us, hesitant to give his whole heart over to the one who asks only that we believe in him. But in Jesus, Nicodemus has seen a way of living and loving that transcends the pain and the suffering of our human experience. And Nicodemus wants it for himself. Yet he falters, asking, how can these things be? It reminded me very much of the words of the psalmist. In Psalm 139, the psalmist lays bare our human wonder in the face of God's exquisite works. The psalmist sung, O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. How can these things be? Yet in Jesus Christ, we know that the Word became flesh and lived among us so that we have seen his glory. In Jesus Christ, we have seen God. We are born from above if we believe this to be true. We are born from above if we commit our whole selves, our bodies, our minds, and our hearts to follow Jesus Christ. As Methodist people, we recognize grace to be an unmerited gift of God that is available to everyone. God's prevenient grace, which simply means the grace that precedes, the grace that comes before we are even consciously aware of God in our lives. That grace is ever present. And it is this form of God's grace that compelled Nicodemus to present himself before the Lord. But here's the thing about grace, the thing that you ought to know. God's grace can be rejected can be refused, can be rebuffed, but it can never be extinguished. 
God's grace is available to us to accept or to refuse as long as we draw breath. It is never too late to claim God's grace for ourselves. Never too late to allow our hearts to be seized and changed and filled by God's Holy Spirit. This is what it means to be born from above or born of the Spirit. To relinquish our hold on earthly things. To encounter Jesus in every person that we meet and to embody Jesus in the actions that we take. For by grace you have been saved through faith, writes the Apostle Paul in Ephesians. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast for we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we may walk in them. As people born of the Spirit, we are challenged to walk in Jesus' footsteps, to become disciples, modeling our lives after his Will we fail at this? Absolutely. We will make mistakes. We will fall down, but by the grace of God, we will recognize our faults. And we will rise triumphant in that grace. And we will try again. For even while we were sinners, God loved us enough to give us Jesus that the world might be saved through him. Loving Jesus changes us. Loving Jesus transforms us. Look no further than our old friend Nicodemus who came to Jesus at night filled with questions unable to understand, unwilling to give his whole heart over and to believe. Because we will meet Nicodemus once more in John's Gospel at the bitter end, when all hope seems lost and the broken body of Jesus has been torn from the cross. This time, this time, Nicodemus walks in the full light of day for all the world to see. And John writes this in chapter 19. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices in linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and the tomb was nearby, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus the Pharisee laid Jesus there. As people born of the Spirit, we too are called to walk in the full light of day for all the world to see and to live in response to God's abundant grace and God's infinite mercy, God's boundless love. 
and my siblings, the rewards of doing this are more abundant than you can imagine. Indeed, John writes, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Therefore, we are justified by the faith that God has instilled within each one of us. Especially during Lent, we recognize that the seed of faith that has been planted within our hearts, no matter how small it may be, can be nurtured and fed and grown and can take root in your life. Your faith blossoms in proportion to the heavenly things that it is fed. My siblings, being born from above means that you have relinquished your grip on the things of this earth. And in their place, you reap the promise of eternal life. Being born from above means that you desire nothing else for yourself than to glorify God in all manner of your living. To model the perfect love that was and is Jesus the Christ. How is it with your soul? The question looms large, especially in Lent. It is one that I cannot answer for you. Only you are able to respond freely and openly to the grace that God has already gifted to you. So together, let us go to Jesus now in prayer, in response to the grace that floods our hearts and refreshes our spirits. Let us pray to the hope of this world. Thou who art over us, Thou who art one of us, Thou who art Give me a pure heart that I may see thee, a humble heart that I may hear thee, a heart of love that I may serve thee, a heart of faith that I may always, always abide in thee.
God is good to us. God is good to those who yearn for him. And we are here this day to proclaim that Jesus is alive, that Jesus is in the world today, that Jesus is present in our worship, and that Jesus is especially present in our offering. Because it is our opportunity to show our generous hearts, to give back what God has given to us, to bless others who are less fortunate, that they may come to love and to know Jesus too. So my friends, as our ushers come forward this morning to receive our offering, I encourage you to give sacrificially on behalf of all of the ministries of this congregation.
you inspire us each and every day. Help us to open our eyes to see your presence revealed in the ordinary, everyday things. Help us to remember that we are loved, that you have given us grace and faith, and that you so loved the world that you gave us the gift of a Savior. May we live as those who are saved by grace. In your precious name we pray. Amen. How are we doing? You feeling that extra hour of sleep that you lost yet? We're almost there, friends. Almost there. I welcome you to this table of grace, this table that is headed by Christ our Lord. This table that Jesus gave to us in his blood and by his flesh. May we remember that we are his, just as he is ours. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, and it is a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You brought all things into being, and you called them all good. From the dust of the earth you formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. And when we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. And so with your people on earth and all of the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, and blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. When you gave him to save us from our sin, your spirit led him into the wilderness, where he fasted forty days and forty nights in preparation for his ministry. When he suffered and died on a cross for our sin, you raised him to life, presented him alive to the apostles during 40 days, and exalted him at your right hand. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new Spirit, a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which our Lord gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Every time you eat of this, remember me. And when the supper had ended, he took a cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my cup of my blood, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and a living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. 
Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly table. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. I want to invite Mr. Uh, Kalanda to come forward. There you are. <laughs> and uh, if you would kindly lead us in the Lord's Prayer in Swahili. Baba yetu ulie mbinguni jina lako litukuzwe ufalme wako ufike utakalo ifanyike duniani kama mbinguni utupe leo mkate wetu wa kila siku tusamehe makosa yetu kama nasi tunavyo wasamehe walio tukosea usituache katika kishawishi lakini utuopoe na maofu amen amen and now together let us pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our Lord took bread and broke it, and offered us his grace. Our Lord took wine and blessed it, and offered us his blood. This morning we will receive by intention. You'll be given a wafer and invited to dip it into the cup if you choose to do so, so that all may participate in this meal. We offer gluten-free. If you desire that as you come forward, let me know. And we offer juice rather than wine. Again, so that everyone is invited to participate. the table is set and the feast is prepared and you are all welcome here.
service, you are invited for some baked goods, and I saw some delicious homemade cookies out there, friends. So they should be awaiting you promptly. And our coffee hour host today, Danielle Matthews, Chris Aldro, Charlie Davis, and Sarah Cartwright. Hear these words as you leave this place. All who hunger, sing together. Jesus Christ is the living bread. Come from loneliness and longing. Here in peace we have been led. Blessed are those who from this table live their lives in gratitude. Taste and see the grace eternal. Taste and see that God is good. Mm -hmm. 